So due to the sheer size of the overhead cam engine compared to the inline six or the original 289, or even the uh, older 5.0s, the shock towers have to come out. So what am I gonna do? So the options are pretty limited on what I wanna do with that and how I want to go about making the engine fit. Shock towers gotta come out, so that means new shocks. Subframe has to come out to accommodate for the power steering. So all the subframes coming out, that means drum brakes are getting out of here and everything else is getting out. Since I already have the rear disc brakes, I might as well go for disc brakes in the front. So that kind of only leaves one option is the Mustang 2 front end. Now the Mustang 2 front end is pretty much adaptable into almost everything. Uh, this one specifically I got is from Speedway Motors. It is for a classic 66 and 65 Mustang. Uh, it was, I think I got it on sale for like 1200 bucks and it came with everything that I needed, including power steering. I really want to go for the power steering, got that creature comfort in there. And with that, it came with the tubular control arms, 11.9 inch disc brakes, the subframe and everything else that I needed pretty much to drag and drop right here. So I highly recommend if you're going to be doing a swap like this, definitely get that Mustang 2 front end and it should make everything so much tighter and so much more clean up front than have the old school stuff on there. Now, if you're gonna be staying with like, say the 289 or the 5.0, you can get away without having to do the front end like the subframe and everything for the Mustang 2 because it's so much more narrow. However, the engine going in here is so beefy and so big that there's no possible way that I could even get the engine in there without cutting out those shock towers. That's why I went for that. Well, anyway, let's jump into installing it. And now it's time to take apart the front end. I gotta take all the old suspension out, all the old components, brakes, everything. And then I gotta cut the fender wells out. First thing I gotta do is use a spring compressor and I hate using spring compressors. They're like the most sketchy thing in the world to use. And yep, let's get to it. So using all new components, using the Mustang 2 front end, uh, basically everything gets chopped out of here. Everything's gonna be all brand new. Those do not want to come off. I mean, I don't really need them, so cut them. Just gotta make sure that spring is fully compressed on there, not putting any pressure down on that. That's that's the important part. So springs out. Now I just gotta pull the rest of this off, and then uh, jump to the other side. All right, saying screw it. Let the cutting commence. These bolts won't come off. Let's cut them up. We got to the point of no return. So now I need to cut out the shock towers. Up until now, I could put everything back in. I need to cut the shock towers out and at that point, I'm not going backwards. I can't go backwards. I can't put new shock tower uh, kind of supports back in. This is the point of no return. Do I have any doubts? Zero. Let's do it. Okay, so we got almost everything out. Now I just have a little bit left to kind of uh, cut off, grind off, things like that, smooth it all out, and we're almost there, almost ready for welding. I got everything cut off, which is good. I have to now prep everything. Now prepping things kind of sucks. I have to grind it all down, uh, get all the rust, get all the material off, just all the junk that's sitting on there for the past, what, 55 years. So I gotta use a sanding disc, 
and that stuff is nasty. That's why I'm wearing this right here. It's going to help uh, not get that uh, black boogers. And I clean it up before you start measuring out and get ready for welding. Got it all sanded down, but I forgot. We need to actually cut and measure. Scratch that. Measure, then cut. There's a part that concaves in a little bit. It gives a little extra room for the spring to sit. So I need to cut another frame, kind of like a half moon shape. Measure twice, cut once. Right? Yeah, that sounds right. Measuring out 22 and a quarter inches. Uh, it's supposed to be 24 and a quarter inches. However, I still have a sub front subframe in here. So that means I measure out the front subframe, which ended up being two inches. All right, got that all cut in there. Got it all prepped up and ready. So now, gotta start welding on it. Measure it one more time before I start clamping it up. Should be right there. Now I just need to clamp it, then uh, tack weld this guy on. We are dead on. Time to throw a couple tacks on this guy. All right, now I just gotta get the other parts tacked on, this side and the bottom side. Then I'll do a full weld on it and then, uh, yeah. All right, uh, got the boxing plates all welded up, all installed. They're looking pretty good. It was a little bit of a learning curve going between the uh, two metals, but I think I did a pretty decent job. They look very strong. Uh, I even had to like smack one spot up and with a hammer to kind of straighten it up and nothing moved so i know that they're really really strong they're held in there very well and uh now it's to uh, jump towards that cross member so per instructions you gotta put a couple things together uh, a couple bushings and uh, things like that and then you gotta weld them in Okay, so, got the subframe set in there. It is pressed up with the floor jack. I'm gonna throw a couple more clamps on there and it is time to weld it in. I'm super excited about it. This is the last time having to measure, cut, grind, everything on the front end right now. So, yeah, just gotta weld it in and, uh, oh, just kidding. I'll have to weld in some uh, engine mounts later on. But for the subframe at least, it is almost done. Now that I got it tack welded all in, I just gotta run through, throw a bead across the whole thing, and uh, test it out. I don't know how I test it out, jump on top of it. But yeah, I'm gonna weld it all in, and I'll show you guys the final results. Cool, so 
got the uh, subframe all welded in last night. I did decide to kind of wait overnight. It was getting a little late and let it cool off before I started welding the uh, top hats or uh, basically the upper spring mounts and control arm mounts. But I got to say, it is looking pretty good. I checked the penetration that I could and it is getting solid penetration in there. Unfortunately, the wells don't look really the best. They're a lot, uh, I guess they're chubby, fat, wherever. I don't know what the exact word would be for that, but the welds are super strong. Um, you visibly see the metals actually melting together as I was welding, so that is solid. That's on point. That's, uh, that's what we want. One thing I forgot is these welds have to be ground down nice and smooth so that the uh, top hats fit perfectly over this and I have to re-weld them in. Forgot about that. I should have welded this in afterwards, but at least it's double welded in now, right? All right, ready for welding. Awesome guys, I got the full front end welded in, the spring purchase welded in, subframe welded in, everything is all nice and set. That's exciting. That was like one of the biggest things that I'm gonna have to do for this whole thing. Now it is time to install all that front end components, steering rack, power steering, brakes, suspension, all that fun stuff. And here comes the messy part. Uh, Got to get these wheel bearings all fully greased up and seated inside of the new rotors. There's no easy way about it. You just got to pretty much go for it. And... It's like the worst smelling stuff ever. Get it all packed in here. So gross. So this is a weird design. I guess it sits, bolts in this way. Actually, I guess that way. So the bolt comes through the top of the, the spindle. Yeah, so the brake light. All right, and there we go. 
got the disc brakes, got the control arms, got the spindle, got the springs, got the shock. Dare I say, this side is now complete. All right, I'm gonna jump to the other side. I'm not gonna record that since, you know, it's the same thing, be kind of boring. But yeah, that's exciting. Got that one side done. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we're gonna see you guys next week.